do you want to power some of these? Do you live on planet Earth? Stay watching because I'm going to show you how to power your Bitcoin ASICs at home. You just have to live in a country where it has 240 volts. I hope that includes you. But first, what do we need? When you look at modern Bitcoin miners, you see they need around 3,500 watts of power. Older S19s often use around 3,300 watts when running in normal mode. That means you need to allow 13 to 14.5 amps per ASIC. There is a low power mode which uses around 80% of the power or 11 to 12 amps. That means to run a pair of ASICs, we're going to need a circuit that can give us 30 to 32 amps. Have you heard of the IEC? This is a global body that creates global electrical standards. If you look closely, you'll start seeing IEC on everything. Those connectors on an S19, they're IEC. Those PDU sockets, all IEC. That circuit breaker, IEC rated. And wouldn't you know it, they also have a global 240 volt plug that is rated for 30 amps in North America and 32 amps everywhere else in the world. Some of the countries call this a C-form plug, some people call it a pin and sleeve plug. This is what one of their plugs look like. Look how massive those pins are. Now we know what we need and how to deliver it. Now we have to look at what size connection your home has. In my country, the most common size for a home is a 60 amp connection with up to 100 amps being allowed. Some countries allow up to 400 amps. Changing the size of your household connection can get very expensive and you also have to apply and there's no guarantee of getting approval. Back to my case, I have a 60 amp connection to my home and I need to save 30 amps of that for running the house. That means I can only have a, th a single 32 amp outlet which is enough to power two ASICs without overloading my grid connection. What size connection does your home have and how many ASICs do you think you could run? Let me know in the comments below. IEC 60309 32 amp plugs are industrial rated and designed to run at 100% load 24 by 7. This is different from domestic plugs that are only rated to run at 80% load continuous. However, it's good practice to leave a safety margin. If you're using particularly power hungry ASICs, you might want to consider running them in low power mode to give you that. Especially if you're in North America where you can limit it to 30 amps, the rest of the world has an extra 2 amps to play with. A lot of the world is converging on MCBs, miniature circuit breakers, which looks like this there because of their small form factor. In a lot of the world you can also get an RCBO which is a miniature circuit breaker with a built-in RCD. I prefer to use these because if anything goes wrong with your ASIC or if the case becomes live you're protected at the circuit level. It also means only one circuit in the house that will be isolated and everything else will keep working. In some countries this added protection will be hard to get and all you better have is a basic fuse or circuit breaker. In most countries 6mm squared or 10AWG cable should be used for a 32 amp circuit. This is what two and a half mil TPS cable looks like. You'll be using six mil cable, so bigger than this. Some countries it's color coded and some countries it comes in a different form factor as well. Now that we have our 30 or 32 amp circuit with the IEC 60309 socket, we need to have a PDU to give us a C13 and C19 plug. This is not sponsored, but I personally like the Altair Tech PDUs. They are well priced and include metering, so you can claim the power you use as a tax expense. Their PDUs have just the right amount of outlets for crypto mining and are very nice and small. Because an S19 has a pair of C14 power socket, I like to use a C20 to dual the C13 power adapter. Of course, Altair Tech sell these as well. And because the PDU has a pair of C19 outlets, you can plug two ASICs directly into it. If your Bitcoin ASIC already has a C19, then you'll just plug it straight in using a C19 to C20 cable. That leaves you with four C13 outlets, which you can use to power low power devices like switches, fruition silencer kits, cooling fans, etc. And that is how you can power ASICs at home, no matter what country you live in. If you like this video, I bet you you'll love this one here as well.